Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel, Anime Orange, where I build and review a lot of 3D metal models. Today on the table, we are going to put together the old country church from Metal Earth. This model was sent to me by Fascinations, aka Metal Earth, to build and review, so I want to say thank you to start to Metal Earth for sending me this and several other models to build and review and talk about. We're going to open up the package go to the table and see what it's all about. This one on the back is rated in the kind of yellowy orange area. Let's see if it's as difficult or more difficult than the gauge says. Let's go over to the table, open this up, see what's inside and put it together. And here at the table, we have the old country church. Let's open this up and see what's inside. A little tap to get the instructions out of the way. We have one metal sheet two metal sheets placed so the unengraved sides are back to back so if you get any scratches in shipment it doesn't affect the final product. Let's place these two to the side and open up the two pieces of paper for instructions. So either this is going to be a complicated build or there's a lot of big pictures taking up a lot of room. Let's open up the first page. I'm going to put this to the side. We're going to look at the page one on the first piece of paper, we've got the usual Metal Earth logo, a line drawing of the finished model, and this one of the sheets underneath it. We've got the 360 view with a QR code that you can either scan or just type in this web address to see a finished model for reference purposes, which can come in handy. Below that, we have a sample part with a notation on insertion tabs, insertion holes, and fold lines. Insertion tabs ultimately go into insertion holes. You can't really see the insertion hole in this picture, but it's basically a little slot that the tab fits into. And fold lines are basically pre-scored areas indicating that something is folded or bent. Beside that, we have a legend, which has grown over time. When you see it, E pointing at something, it's pointing at the engraved side or section. It's usually the detail that you're supposed to see. Sometimes the engraved side can be confused with fold lines. Um, NE is pointing at a non-engraved side or section. This way you have an idea of which way to orient the part when you're folding and attaching things. This is an attention point. It usually talks about alignment. Usually it's pointing out a tab or a part that has to be faced in a certain way when you bring two parts together. Sometimes there's notes that go with it that tell you what you need to pay attention to. We have the old-fashioned blue circle and green triangle. Blue circle, when you see that, means to insert a tab and fold it over 90 degrees. Green triangle means to insert a tab and twist it 90 degrees. Inside that, we have some recommended tools, and we'll go over tools here in just a second. Down here, we have the two different sheets laid out, and I'm going to grab one as an example. You can see that this is a drawing of this particular sheet with all the parts, numbers, labeled, pointing at the parts. you notice that these parts are colored in yellow. There's some other colored in parts amidst a bunch of parts that are left empty. The ones that are colored in, the same color, are the same part. This is part one. These look to be windows, probably stained glass. Well, they're the same stained glass window in numerous different places. They just number the first part, color them all the same color. That way you know these are all part one. They're used in multiple places, and they don't have to clog up the side of this with a bunch of numbers. It also makes it really quick and easy to find it because this will usually be colored in the assembly flow chart the same. Slide over to page two, and we start the assembly flow chart, starting with part one, one of the windows. You have showing the engraved sides. You want to make sure the engraved side is kind of facing up. You have part two here, facing in this direction. You put the windows on there. Looks like these go... I'm going to have to see that part to understand exactly how that's supposed to go. It kind of looks like, does it go on top? looks like it goes on top. But then these are behind. That's a little bit confusing. So we're going to deal with that here in just a second when I start building it. The idea is you just follow these arrows and, and fold and attach the parts as listed. You get the end of this page, you flip over to page 3, continue on attaching parts. You know, you've got your blue circles here showing to fold these over and the green triangles meaning to twist those tabs. You get done with page three, you just jump over to page four, you get done with page four. You jump on, open up the next sheet, find page five inside of there and keep going. I'm not going to talk a whole lot more about the instructions. That's a brief overview of the instructions. Let's talk a little bit about some tools and we'll start putting this together. 
Let's talk a little bit about tools. The very basics of what you're going to need is a pair of tweezers and some clippers. The tweezers, you can do a lot of bending, shaping, twisting of tabs, folding of things over. The clippers are going to help you get the pieces out of the sheets cleanly and easily by clipping them out instead of trying to bend them out, which can cause damage. I've also supplemented my set with some precision tweezers. I have a couple of pointed ones here. One, I ground the tip down just a little bit to give it a more sturdy tip for tabs and twisting things. And then I have a precision flat set. And between all of these, I can do a lot of bending and shaping and twisting. I also strongly recommend some sort of pliers to complement your set. I have some flat nose here that have definite uses. I have some long needle nose pliers for some of the longer pieces. And then I have some curved tips for grabbing things at an angle and bending them over. We start by clipping out the stained glass windows, which really aren't glass, but metal. And also by cutting out the wrong part, oops.
These little lights are the tiniest thing in the model. Take your time bending the steps and they will turn out just fine. I used a light twist to hold the sides of the steps on for now. I want to eventually fold the tabs over for a cleaner look. Now that the front steps are built and attached, I will fold over the previously twisted tabs on the side. I initially tried to bend all of the edge sections over at once, but that did not go so well, so I folded them over one at a time.
Now to work on the other side of the church. Getting this roof section on was a bit of a squeeze. I considered removing the upper center part, or at least one tab of it, to make it so that I could open up the roof angle a little to get it over the tabs holding it onto the rest of the model. However, I was able to get, with a little more effort, the tabs in place without removing that center piece. I was going to fold over all the side tabs, but the one corner had a light in the way, so I just twisted it. With the front steps, I lightly twisted the tabs holding on the sides and then after attaching the steps to the building, I folded the side tabs over. I felt comfortable doing it that way because the both side pieces of the front steps had tabs at the back attaching them to the rest of the building. Side steps do not have a tab that attach both sides to the building. Knowing that, I folded over one side tab up but then folded the other side tab down to keep the piece from sagging or from accidentally falling off because both tabs were bent the same direction.
The assembly flowchart says to twist the bottom tabs and fold over the top ones, which makes sense since the top tabs will be exposed. A little extra coaxing is necessary to get this part on. And now the hardest part of the build, which really isn't that difficult, the steeple. You will definitely need some sort of tool to hold the fold areas of this part to keep them from warping as you bend.
Three tabs are fairly easy to get into place, but not the fourth tab. I bent the lower flap back down so I could get the tab in a slot without knocking any of the other tabs loose. For the short pieces, I folded one flap up and one down to keep the pieces from falling off. I started to twist the tabs holding the steeple on but then decided to fold them in for a cleaner look. <laughs> 